right, we're live. Hey everyone, so this is another Wolfram Institute live science stream. Uh, now we are going to be discussing sub-axiomatic foundations of mathematics with Carlos and continuing our discussion of the research that he's been doing. Um, so just to provide a very, very quick overview, um, Carlos is emulating expressions in Boolean algebra using SK combinators, which are highly minimal uh, formal systems, actually precede uh, Turing machines historically. And what we're doing is we're emulating these expressions um, and once you start to emulate them through this very low level kind of combinator machine code, um, what you want to what you want to do is you want to try and understand you know to what degree, as we're emulating Boolean algebra, we still see Boolean operators in these intermediate steps as we're as we're evaluating some expression. Ultimately, we are able to evaluate these down to true or false, and so we know that it works. But the intermediate content in these evaluations is still um, quite unknown and and mysterious to us. So I think today, I mean, Nix had some suggestions which I think are helpful in terms of searching for non-minimal uh, Boolean operators according to our, our true-false emulation regime. Um, and there was a number of good suggestions that were covered during our last stream, and I thought, you know, we should just meet and um, and work on, work on some of those, especially, I, I would say, with Nick here, um, actually setting up those searches so that you can begin you can begin those searches over the next couple of days. I think that would be a good idea. But first, I think Carlos has some some results, maybe some even some some troubles, just in terms of computational explosiveness that he yeah. wants to to show us. So let's 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 jump let's jump in. Okay, so let me uh, do this carefully because I have to. So the stream sees what they're supposed to see. Take my notebook here, and they won't see us for a bit, and then I will share, and I'll be fine. Um, you can see this, right? Not yet. Yes. Okay. Um, okay, so, again, just to give a concrete reminder to everyone, like what, what the point of this is, the few viewers that we have, um, the notebook response. Yeah. Okay. So, so yeah. So the basic, the basic idea. Wait, did I have it at the top? Maybe. Yeah, it's here. So again, um, recall from Friday or from a couple of weeks ago. Uh, the basic idea we have is we assign this particular rewrite system that is very very simple. It's just dealing in expressions that look like this. So they are um, sort of head expressions with brackets and and there's only two com two operators in this in this world it's the s operator and the k operator and they would they would in, in principle act on some kind of um argument expression some kind of term expression but um in in we only really care for their functional behavior so their functional behavior is expressed in terms of these rewrite rules so whenever you see s applied to three arguments in brackets exactly in this pattern you're going to rewrite that has a new pattern that just puts, you know, duplicates the Z and puts the X and the Y. Similarly with K, K takes two X, two elements in, two, in brackets this way and just basically kills the second one. Um, so the idea is that, uh, again, a great insight uh, from, from early in the 20th century was that these particular uh, simple rewrite rules can actually emulate a lot of the formal systems that we care about, in particular Boolean algebra, which arguably we can think as the basis of for, for human reason. And, and so that's what we're trying to do here. So in particular, so the, the basic way this works is you have some expression that is, uh, the, so you assign K and SK the, the truth values. So those expressions, if, are, if those are the, the sole expressions, then they are interpreted as truth or false. Um, and any other expression might be or might not be meaningful in terms of Boolean algebra. But um, the, so the game here is to find the correct ones that can be passed to arguments that then produce uh, a correct either K or SK output, right? And so after a systematic search, uh, we find this, this list of correspondences. Uh, in case anyone is a little bit confused, this, this K here and this SK here for first and last, these are all binary operators. So the way they, they act is you have the pattern for it. So in the case of, and for example, the pattern is sk 
S S K in this in this bracket pattern, and then you you pass two arguments K and S K in this case because we're doing true and false. So all these expressions need to be appended two more bracket slots with something inside, uh, and in particular with either true and false for them to uh, to evaluate to something, right? And and the, the, the beauty of this system is that once you have you do that, you basically let the system evolve. You do all the possible rewrites until you until you you've exhausted all the possibilities, and you always find it's always a confluence system. So you always find either S K or K. That's the big result that we are basing all, all this work on. Um, yep. So so anyway, so so after that we we uh, we started looking for many things. I, I showed um, some of the patterns that appear when when looking at um, evaluations of all the possible functions. So we have some matter patching and things like that. Uh, but what I've spent my time today doing, um, effectively, has been so well trying to make sure that the algorithm actually works right, and it does. And now it's just a matter of so. I mean, I, I was fairly certain that it was working fine. It's the problem was the just the coloring, how to do the tool tipping and coloring and and, and so on. Um, and then the and then the other thing was to look at uh, higher higher expressions, right? So we wanted to have some yeah. some experimental. Uh, results on on higher higher RIT expressions, I mean longer uh, Boolean algebra expressions. Um, mm -hmm. So I imported here a Nix function to to um, to combine the to combine the the, 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 the Boolean operators, the binary Boolean operators. Uh, so with all this does essentially uh, makes uh, any any formula of this kind. I, mean, I just have it here so people can see that you can you can pass. Um, um, some Boolean algebra formula, unevaluated, and and this function, a combinator Boolean formula, will yeah. just spit out the the correct the correct um, expression. So you can you can notice something here. Um, so so for example, so yesterday, uh, sorry, not yesterday, Friday, uh, we we looked at we looked at one example that I thought was kind of minimal, which is looking at um, and associativity. Right, so this is a, a ternary expression, so involving two operators instead of one, um, and and so basically you you write your expression left hand side, right hand side, um, and and you see um, you see what you get uh, with this function, which is essentially just currying the correct things. Uh, I mean, could be done by hand, but obviously Nix very efficient function just does it for us, um, and so you get you get these two expressions. This is uh, what the left hand side should look like. This is what the right hand side. Should look like. Um, so if you play, you pay, play. Sorry, if you pay close attention here, you would notice that there are three arguments um, in in these brackets, right? So if you, if you pay close attention, you see there's k k s k, right? Yes. You play. If you pay close, atten close attention here, k k s k. So those are exactly the the pattern of true true false, right? In in this lo longer expression. Which is the boolean, which is the boolean emulation of, of the sorry, is the combinator emulation of the boolean expression, and of something and of something something, right? So, so just just to just to reality check everyone that this is the this corresponds to the arity of the of the overall expression, and I mean Nick's function does deal directly with the arity, so it's not I mean it's not coincidence. I mean that this is this is very deliberate. Um, so. Anyway, so this was the, the example from yesterday, so just to show it again. Uh, okay, so the other thing that we can do, and this was James' suggestion last time, we can also look at the, at the quality statement, as a, because that's also a Boolean algebra statement. So the fact that this left-hand side equals false and this right-hand side, right, right -hand side equals false, um, that's, it's also it's true that they both... Equal. Something. Sorry? Because the, that comment about arity again. Yeah. It's not related to the how the formula was generated. There's no assumption of an RT at all. No. While generating that expression. It's not, but but it's a good reality check. That's what I meant by reality check. It should be a ternary expression. No. Do you know what I mean? Not. It, in what sense it would be turning because it doesn't yeah, take I, I, I was confused by that as well yeah okay so let me let me clarify what i mean and and then maybe maybe there's something that you, you don't agree with 
because it's your function. But as far as, far as you could understand the code, um, the I mean, this expression here, and of and, that's a ternary operator, right? If you, if you, you know, blank, true and false, that's a ternary operator. Well, you already provided all the values. How It's not already, it stopped being an operator. It doesn't take any yeah, values. Yeah, but it's unevaluated. I'm, I'm leaving everything unevaluated to, to emulate first. But you don't, but you're no longer providing any arguments to that expression. Sure. Right. You already yeah, provided yeah, yeah. all of them. Of course, of course. I mean, this is all evaluated. This this full expression is does not. This is not a ternary operator. This is just a value. You you you're just saying that the inside of this expression, there's a uh, an expression for n that takes three arguments, uh, two arguments, right? Well, what because I, what I'm saying is that. Sure. Yes. Yes. Yeah, what, what I'm saying is that you can trace, I mean, you, you can see well, the it's arguments. Kind of I don't think in the general it holds it. If you have three values there, that there's going to be something that with three arguments. No, no, of course not. Of course not in general. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was not trying to make that implication. What, I, what I was trying to say is that you can trace the, the k, k, s, k, and the k, k, s, k here to the three arguments of the expression. I'm not saying that that exact form is a, a consequence of, of, the, of the emulation. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. 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 It's, it's just a reality check that, that we are passing this expression three arguments uh, true, true, false, and within the, the within one the... thing you can only state that something inside of that expression there's going to be sub expression relating to true, true, and false. Yes. But it's not. Pretty, but they not necessarily appear as a three argument input to some. Other sub expression. No, no, but they don't appear as a three argument, but they, they but disjointly they do. They all appear as as three arguments, maybe nested in different positions, not like a like a, an isolated package of three arguments, but they they all appear as, as three arguments because they are they're going to be nested pairs of arguments anyway, right? What I'm trying to say is that you will if you have an expression that looks anything like you know n n variables and and a number of operators applied on them with, with nesting. At the end of the day, when you emulate that with our emulation pattern, um, you're, going, you're going to find eventually some bracket and something inside which is k or sk, because that's how we are emulating the values. Let me just point it out. That, let me annotate stuff. <laughs> In that particular selected expression that you have, yeah. your true, true, and false it's not that three arguments that you're pointing out. The first true would be, can you say where it is? So like this one, yeah, right? This is the last false. Yeah. So this false, Yeah. basically, right? <laughs> but, <laughs> but the first true is not this case here. Wait. So, in particular, or maybe in in the upper expression, it may be more easier to do. Because that in, in this true here, so it might be it's actually sure. sure. Yeah, 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 that's right. It might be on the left. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, I agree with you. But I mean, I was yeah. saying maybe this three. No, no, yes, no. I, I agree. I agree. I mean, I, I was I was highlighting this three, and that, that that's wrong. Or I think it's wrong. I mean, because and is and is ssk. Yeah, I think I think that's I think that's the yeah, I think this is the... So, so you have SSK, true SSK, true false. Oh, that's what that's what it says above. <laughs> Look, it's and true and true false. And now we have SSK, true, and SSK, true false. <laughs> so the, so the I, I think, Carlos, that additional, you were highlighting true, true, false. But that first K that you yeah. showed is part of SSK, which is your and. Yeah, so yeah, reading yeah. this thing, it says it says and true and true false. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is actually literally what it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So it's this K and these two, this K, S, this K and this SK. Yes, yes. So this is. I think this is actually a better sanity check that this this thing is saying what we. Uh, what yeah, we yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. For sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. I mean. Okay. Exactly. I mean. I, let's. I was just trying let's, to point out because th these yeah. things are, are compositional, right? So, I mean, we, we are 
we happen to be evaluating on true and false, and that's why it's confusing because everything is S and K and S and K, right? Like, there's nothing else. But yeah, it's hard to follow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, but yeah, the, yeah. The, my point is that this whole expression and of something and of something something that's a ternary operator and, and anything that goes inside i was just trying to sort of visually refer everyone to say yeah you see s and k because that's where they should go i mean i i just i agree i mean it's not the, the, well, three the, the one thing you can do in order to highlight this particular thing if you make a combinator boolean formula but replace true and false with some symbols yeah yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> that's... exactly yeah sure exactly the, the okay, true and false let's you, you, keep going guys yeah, yeah, let's keep going. yeah, yeah. Just, just it's, it's already it's already it's actually already yeah some time has already passed yeah, yeah we, we, we we're, have, we're quite we behind have, we have other so things to discuss yeah let, let yeah, me cut to the, to the problems and hopefully you can give me some nice pointers for the next few days um okay cool so yeah so you can also do the combined statement um this takes forever to, to compute so <laughs> so i wouldn't in in the in the multi-way case the yeah, single the way case yeah, is not that sure bad. yeah so so anyway, um, so just as a recap, this is what the first evaluation looks like. This is the, the, le the left-hand side, this is the right-hand side. They both evaluate to false, which is what we want. Um, and then we said, you know, are these two graphs related? Because they, they are kind of evaluating to the same thing. Do they overlap? The answer yes. is yes, there is non-empty intersection. It, so there's this yes. graph that shows us the two starting points. And, and they sh it shows us that at some point these two get entangled somehow. Um, and so I decided to, so yeah, I had to abort this one. This was taking more than 15 minutes. So no, no chance there. Um, now, so, okay. So the second one I tried to test was uh, distributivity of and and or, which I think is the hallmark of Boolean algebra in a way. So it's, the, yeah. it's the minimal semi-ring property that we want to see. Um, so, so yeah, so these are the same thing. I mean, you just evaluate that, you get these expressions, this is the combined statement. You run this guy for a, about 10 minutes and it does end and you get this. <laughs> yeah, 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 that'll happen. And a good, a good sanity check is that you can actually find K. <laughs> There's K. Um, find that pretty quick. So, and this is the initial state, right? I run the other half, which is not that crazy longer. It's just about three Ks, about three Ks longer, maybe four <laughs> SKs longer. And it uh -huh. ran for literally an hour and a half or something. And I, and I had to yeah. stop it. So, yeah. so yeah, that had to be aborted. Um, now, my... So here's one one idea I've had about this since uh, I've, I've been thinking since Friday because we had this conversation about bigger and why bigger and so on. So of course we can just do the fixed point one, in which case we we get yes. we get the list and it's much faster. But I don't think well, but but the key thing is, and I don't think we have this capability yet. You want to be able to sample. We want to be able to do single way evaluation for many paths. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. right now. We only have the choice of really one path. I think when we when we do that fixed point function, well, one path and, or all paths, right? Because this is all paths. Well, multi way is all paths. Yeah. Just doing the fixed point is one. It's one path. But you yeah. want to be able. You want to be able to do a single path evaluation for for these different paths. Yeah. It's, uh, right. Yeah. Okay. You got. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So 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 Nick and I Nick and I are in communication to to build this functionality. Yeah, Nick. Sorry. Go ahead. I'm just saying that. Uh, it's not longer an evaluation if you just pick out a path from the multi-way graph, right? It's already evaluated for you, just picking out the path that you already constructed. If you want an actual single-way evaluation, which is not the default fixed point listed, yeah. right? You have to make a selection at every hypersurface or something, right? You can do yeah. something like, you can just change your function for the next graph tag instead of extracting all of the values from this multi place just extract a random choice right or right sample yeah and that would just generate a random path well this gets into this whole multi-computation language design thing which i think stephen really wanted you to do a few months ago which is how i think have a more sophisticated way to be able to pick particular paths out of your multi-way system according to certain criteria um yeah 
I think that, I think that's a, good... a design nightmare. I, I, <laughs> I, I think I think a good starting point, like we said last Friday, I think a good starting point, like we said last week, is to try and and have a function that that actually allows us to drop a starting point on on the graph, right? Graphically, like we we can just pick an initial state and say flow from here, and maybe we we'll have to specify which rule because of, of course, I mean. It could, it could either be the sub multi-way that flows from there from that state or it could be pick this particular way of flowing this particular way of applying rules from this initial state um and then it's a selection function basically you have to specify a selection function yeah yeah so yeah. at each particular state you have a set of events that you can follow and selection function specifies which one you actually have to evaluate yeah one or multiple or all of them if you have like an actual recipe, computable recipe, reducible one, for like for selecting your events, then you have some yeah some actual method of a single. I mean that, that's event. that's what the fixed point does, right? Because it just arbitrarily. Or just one particular one. Yeah, yeah, one particular one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. But there are like uh, multiple of those. For sure. But how sure. parameterizable they are, it's a different matter. You can, for the evaluation of expression, it's the nicely. Nice per parameterization that we have is like left most outermost order, and you can combine yeah, yeah, them yeah, in yeah. different. Yeah, that's one parameterization. Exactly. Maybe there are some others. In general, you can just follow random one. Yeah. And yeah, no, for sure, work. for sure. I mean, uh, Nick and I had already scheduled meetings to to work on this. So I think for for next time, we we will have something for to say about about yeah, sure. about this particular direction. So one idea. One I'm... one thing one one thing which is you know I actually I take I I I uh, I read I. I will take back um, a comment that I made on Friday, which is yes, it would be nice to take a to take a graph and then to do selection of like actually visually given the graph. But I think one key point, um, just about Wolfram language in general, is that the reason why these computations take a long time is not because crunching the S's and K's is difficult. It's just because actually rendering the graph is difficult. Yeah. So. Um, so if we have some function where it's spitting out these single way evaluations that we have, um, it's it's not different. You can compute really insane ones. Yeah. You can compute very complicated multi-way combinator, um, multi-way structures. You just don't actually render them graphically. And if we have some selector function where we're particular, we're taking particular paths, you know, you can, we'll be able to have, I mean, I don't know if you've ever seen these single way combinator evaluations where they're, they're, you know, they're, they take a long time to evaluate and the expressions become both deep and quite long. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we can, we can pick multi-way systems that have many of these. That's not the problem. All of that is just nice number. All that's just nice symbolic uh, crunching, which Wolfram language can do fine. It's just this kind of, um, this thing that kills it it's not yeah. good the, unfortunately the rendering capability i mean the, with the, when they do render it's beautiful but it uh, it hits a wall no no for sure i yeah I, I agree i mean i was not i was not trying to imply that let's just do the visual stuff and, and i mean obviously the ideal is we have the, the the ability to to do the the computations in in a path first just symbolically and then we render i mean yeah. i mean this is just this is more for for our understanding right the, the computation has to be done yeah. Um, so before I forget about, because we're running late, so before I, before I forget about the idea that I had. So I've been thinking about yes. this. So basically the last question that we had on Friday, which was, you know, how, how do we attack this thing? So I mean, there's this big things, you know, uh, we're talking a little bit about maybe graph topology as a, as a criteria. Yes. So another, yes. another idea yeah. that I think, a different angle that I think might be interesting to discuss, and I wanted to know, to know your opinions on this, is uh -huh. so these... Okay, so this particular example, uh, for example, right, like the the, um, the distributivity law, right, for for semi rings that that would for and and or, um, something that's that's interesting is that. You know, the, the law is an equality, right? So it's it's a statement. I mean, imagine that your variables are fixed, true, false, whatever. So it's a statement that, you know, you have the left hand side that has a value, you have the right hand side that has a value. And you have the, the statement of left hand side equals right hand side that also has a value, yeah. right? Yes. So yes. So there is, I mean, actually, let me actually show the graphs because it's it's more visual. So let me just actually use this, this example because all the graphs are on the screen. So 
you have the exact, exact same thing, right? right? Le left hand side, right hand side, um, both the entire multi-way systems. And the, the, the idea is, I mean, they, they are, not only do they overlap in this non-trivial way because there's intersection and they, they become a combined multi-way system, but there is a natural sense in which, because this is a, this is a Boolean law, right? It's an equality, it's an axiom in, in, in the Boolean side. Um, that is also um, evaluated under the under the, the, the uh, under the emulation. So there's there's four different yeah. elements for for a given Boolean axiom, right? In in our emulation framework, which which yeah. is based on 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 evaluation, right? It's based on passing the actual values of true false to all the variables. Um, there there are four given a, given a Boolean axiom. There are four elements that we we can immediately. Uh, look at. I mean, so, I guess so there's the left. Hand, so there's the left hand side. There's the right hand, right -hand side, side. There's there's the equality and what there's what there's the union between the yeah. evaluations of the left and the right hand yeah. side. Yeah. Exactly. So so yeah. I think so so th that that sort of that sort of things that that might have the information because those things are co are compositional, right? So there's, it's a relevant question to ask on the boolean side. You you're doing mm -hmm. you're doing. If if the left hand side evaluates to true and the right hand side evaluates to false, you already know what the equality is going to evaluate to. So it's compositional, right? This, these four elements are not disjoint; they're not independent, right? So the, so it's compositional. Now, so this is what I think might be another another angle uh, at these big multi-way systems, right? I mean, they combine in a in a non-trivial way because they. They are secretly, I mean, we know they combine because we know they are emulating Boolean algebra. Imagine that we encounter this, this rewrite system without knowing they are emulating any algebra. Then we would not know that they, that they combine to something. But I think this is a great Fair. opportunity to, to identify Fair. this property because we know they actually compose to something because we know they are emulating algebra. And so I think it would be interesting to see if the algebra side has, sorry, if the emulation side, so the, the combinator side can somehow um, capture the compositionality of the algebra side, right? Because at the end of the day, that's what the sub-axiomatic means in my head at, at the moment is, okay, we're going below axioms. It means that we need to give a combinator level statement that is equivalent to, to the axiom. And the axiom is, a, is something that is compositional because they are equalities. And so they, they, need, to be, they need to be somehow uh, addressed on, on an equal footing, right? So this is another angle. This, I'm not saying this, I, don't, I haven't really developed this idea. I was just thinking this morning a little bit about this. Um, doing some checks and whatnot, but I think I think this is another direction. Graph topology is one possibility of this of this combination of this tetrad. In the, in the particular case of equations of Boolean equations, you have this tetrad of things: left, right hand side, left hand side. More generally, you have sub expressions in general, right? Like I mean, I'm not saying anything. I'm not elevating equality between right hand side and left hand side to any particular meaning because that's kind of arbitrary. So the, what I'm saying stands true for compositionality in general. Just take an expression mm. and the value of that expression depends on the sub evaluations of the expression, right? And we know, I mean, from, from the combinator emulation theorem, I don't know if this is a published theorem, but we probably should find it at some point and refer to what, what we're using. We know that we are always going to evaluate to either true or false, right? We know this mathematically. We don't have to compute to know this. Um, and, but, we know that this is also true for all the sub-expressions in a, in a long, imagine a complicated Boolean expression. This is true for, not all, for the entire expression, but for all the sub-expressions as well, as long as the syntax is correct, right, of the, of the Boolean expression. So this, there is a layer of compositionality that is completely invisible on the, on the combinator side. I mean, just plainly combinators, you don't see anything because it's just combinators, right? Um, so I think yeah. this, is a key, this is a key thing to understand. To, to understand general Boolean expressions is this compositionality how how does it manifest uh, the level of confidence? would you mind would you mind just being a, a bit more specific so um let's say if we're to compose the left and the right hand side um what what precisely does it mean to yeah. actually compose them Com by compositionality i mean that i mean i was using the example of left hand side equals right hand side as as something with 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 whatever uh, two 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 sub expressions. So you have an equals of L R, right? Left hand side, right, right hand side. So yeah. the idea is that the the whole expression gets emulated into into combinators, yeah. and we know that it's going to evaluate to, to something. But if you take L and yeah. R as sub expressions, 
they are, they, yeah. we also know they evaluate to something. And the thing is that as, as multi-way systems, they are different they, because one is much larger than the yes. other. And, and we, yes. so one natural question is, are the sub expressions just sub sub multi-way systems, like literal sub graphs of the multi-way system? Yeah. I suspect right. not, but I don't know. Right. 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 Okay. So the point is, if you set the left hand side and the right hand side equal to each other, you just take our minimum, our minimum two arity combinator for equals, yeah. and then and then it, the two arguments are just your left hand side and your right hand side. Yeah. So, but but because of the nature of the combinators, you know, you can you can write all these in terms of oh god, what's the name of this Nick? I mean, you could write this all just in terms of instead of having the you would have it just in terms of S's and K's with all these dots in parentheses. I don't remember what the actual name of that particular operator is, but um, the application or something. Yeah, but it has some particular. It's 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 like a pretty specific. Um, anyway, it doesn't matter. Yeah, but it, it's um, just notation. But, I think it's the same. But but now the question is, and we don't know. This is the yeah, this yeah, is yeah. the research question, exactly, which yeah. is what what is. Like we understand it in terms of uh, on the input level, we understand how to kind of compose these together. The question is, are there compositional properties that are manifest in the multi-way structures of, of, of these when, when we piece them together? Yeah. That's the question. Yeah. So, so, so just, just to refer to your example very quickly, right? So you say um, L and R, some complicated expressions, and we're just saying yes. L equals R, right? So as a rewrite yep. system, you will have your whatever it is for equals. I mean, it was a bit longer. So whatever it is for equals, bracket L, bracket R, right? Yep. So right. as a rewrite system, you know for sure that what you can do, I mean, you will find a path within your multi-way system. You will find a path that actually just, you know, you, you start by leaving, ignoring all, all the expression except for L. You rewrite L all the way down to either true or false. And then you ignore everything else except for R. You rewrite that yep. all the way to false, and then you just yep. have equal, and you just have evaluation of equal, and then from that point, it is the the evaluation uh, multiway that we already derived a couple of weeks ago, and and, yes. and then and then you 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 get to the final value, right? So we we know for sure that as sub graphs, you're gonna have this this sub expression, the sub expressions uh, um, within the the multiway, right? We know this. So so does this does this mean? Let's just take the example where you set a left hand side and a right hand side equal to each other. There will be one path within, you know, in terms of all the possible, because this becomes multi way because you can, you can apply your S and K rules at different positions at different times, right? So you can imagine one instance in which we apply all the S and K rules for our left hand side, yeah. right? And then you proceed and you do yeah. it for your right hand side. And yeah. at, at the end, you just do equals. Yeah. That's one path. You have another path where it's the same thing but you're doing it for the right hand side first and the left hand side. So like the, there will be particular paths um, where you can imagine you're basically um, evaluating your left hand side and your right hand side before, and then you do equals last. And then there will probably be all kinds of other paths where because this is all, you know, some combinator expression, you're evaluating it at these weird, you know, other other uh, in these weird other ways and things become all kind of um, messed up. Yes, that's what I meant by compositionality. Yes. So in general, this is, this was for L equals R, but in general, you have some expression, and this is true for any sub-expression, right? Any any meaningful um, Boolean algebra sub-expression of a Boolean algebra expression will yeah. will will have this phenomenon in combinator world, right? Because you will just ignore everything else, rewrite this all the way to evaluation, and 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 this will be true. Right? So that's why, I mean, actually, I forgot to say last week, but this is why I, I began by, by studying the evaluation multi-way uh, graphs directly, because in, in any arbitrary Boolean expression, multi-way uh, emulation, the full one, we're always going to find sort of regions that are isomorphic to these, because you can always yes. choose the paths that, that ignore everything else except for the sub-expression. And eventually, you always yes. get down to evaluation. Of the of the smallest expression, the smallest operators. Yeah, yeah. So this is another thing that I think it's important to to understand and to develop uh, some theory. So hopefully Nick and I will will have some some handles to. Um, I mean, I would I would I would I would I would, I would get some uh, programming knowledge from Nick to to be able to have better better tools to like crack this this wall because. 
Yeah. Well, I mean, this is this is helpful because in terms of kind of framing this whole thing, it, I think it is important to keep in mind that in the multi-way picture, no matter what, there will be at least one path. I mean, it kind of depends on the setup, but there'll be at least one path, so several paths, where you're computing this in a way where, so like, you know, I think we discussed this a few live streams ago, where it's like, we know what, you know, if you just take and, or you just take or, or you just take these these individual emulations of these particular operators, if you know the signatures for their evaluation, which sometimes is four or five steps, right, there'll be some path where you trace this and you see those signatures come up. And so it's like, I can see you could, and then if you, if you were to map those entire signatures, which might be several um, operations, if you, if you kind of were to kind of contract those together, you could just map that to some standard uh, computation of some uh, Boolean expression. Where it's like, okay, first we're doing and, then we're doing or, we're doing blah, 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 blah. And I guess the question is, besides that particular case, are there other cases where um, there are other, like the, uh, you know, all of these other evaluations, do they have anything to do with, uh, with, with Boolean algebra? Actually, as I say that, this might be something that's worth searching for as well, which is right now we're just searching to see, you know, do we see these Boolean operators show up? Like, do we see AND, do we see XOR, do we see NAND? But, um, and forgive me if I've, if you've done this, because I know you had two different ways of, of doing it, but it's like, we know what AND looks like, but we also know what its full, uh, its full evaluation looks like. Yeah. And so we could do a search where we're actually looking for, you know, we don't just want AND, we don't just want to see the operator show up, we want to see that entire, um, AND's entire kind of computation, which in the combinator world takes several steps. Right, but the point is, if you were to if you were to take the right path, you could shrink down, you know, this common this evaluation, common evaluation of of and you could shrink that down to just this is you know this is just and, and then that would correspond perfectly to how you would normally compute some some uh, some Boolean expression. Yeah, that's that's exactly yeah. what I was saying on Friday. That by having maybe some, that's what I meant by if you assign to a, an operator, you assign the entire family of graphs um, then of evaluations, then you can essentially package that and say, okay, I found these subgraphs, so I found this, the, the evaluation of this operator. I, I, actually, I think that's always going to be the case in a way, because um, I mean, if you're eventually you're going to evaluate to those things, I mean, there's nothing else. In the, I mean, the emulation is set up at the level of binary Boolean operator uh, evaluation. Right. That's that's what the emulation does. The other point that I had before I forget, uh, incidentally, it's not very practical for the next few days, I guess. But the other point is we are doing evaluation emulation. We are not we are not doing otherwise symbolic Boolean algebra emulation, which is another possibility that we have. We are not doing. What do you mean by that? I mean, um, Boolean algebra as an axiomatic theory, not as a not as a, as a set of functions on, on Boolean on Boolean variables. So, so just a, just as and or uh, not maybe with with the semi ring axioms, right? And the with se involutive involutive semi ring, commutative semi ring axioms, whatever you want to call it. So so basically, just the just the axioms of the algebra, right? So no need to evaluate to true or false. No no need to see true or false anywhere, right? So just 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 define. Um, and or as commutative associative operations uh, and distributes over or and then you have negation that is an involution so it's it's um, um, idempotent and it's sorry it's nilpotent and it, it distributes over over the operators so so just that abstract algebra right that abstract mm, algebra algebraic um, theory mm, might be able to be emulated I'm not saying with SK combinators. Yeah. I don't know if with SK combinators, but well, some the, other way, right? the only difficult thing is it's very convenient right now that everything always comes down to true or false. Yeah, yeah. For as sure. soon as as soon as you have some setup where you're giving it other kinds of um, arbitrary, say, arguments, which you can do if you just include A, yeah, B, yeah. C, X, Y, Z, 
I mean, this. It, it, well, you can I have try no to, idea. I, you can make a. Huh? You can search for those too, right? Yeah. You can. You have find equational proof function. You just may leverage that, and actually, start a search for those systems too. So instead of having. So instead of just searching for Boolean combinators by just substituting true and false arguments and trying to extract the Boolean table, you actually run a ah, proof I see. system on top of that. I, I right? approve and based on the SK combinator rewrites, right? Yeah, right. that's your axioms. Right. Right? You just replace your rule with the equality. You do a fine combinational proof, right? Yeah. I think Jonathan have an actual function that just uh, yeah, yeah, that's fi find uh, proof. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Find equational proof and then. Not, well, find equational proof is an actual. Uh, it's the most general one of those, but there's Jonathan also did some the most more, more specific ones. For example, there's maybe find combination, combina combinator proof or something. Ah, really? When okay, those, interesting. When the, the actual axioms are already built in and find Wolfram model proof and probably something else. Right. I see. I see. Interesting. Yeah, absolutely. That's what I meant. Yeah. Find, 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 find equational proof, but you don't have to specify axioms by yourself. And but there may be some implicit axioms also there. Yeah. yeah that's interesting. But I, I, I do want to make a comment. I mean, this what you're saying about composition. This is this is helpful because I think. I think one one difficulty that we that we are encountering in this project is like there are going to be some paths that correspond. This is like you had you had like this kind of somewhat category theoretical uh, drawing, like something that you drew by hand, where you had the you had the boolean case and you had the combinator case. So it's like we know that there are certain there'll be certain paths that just correspond to you know. Um, the normal evaluation you would do on the Boolean side, but every single evaluation of the Boolean operator is slightly longer because we're in combinator territory. Um, and we also know that the, you know, the evaluation, there's like a kind of the, the initial points and the, the, the fixed points are also going to be the same. Um, and so this whole notion of compositionality is very, very helpful. And it, um, it, it, at the very least, it speaks to what happens along these particular paths where there's that neat correspondence between the combinator um, case and the, and the Boolean algebra case. Um, how should I say this? I think um, we're doing these additional searches and just trying to get some sense of what there is as a kind of preliminary exercise. But one thing, uh, Carlos, I think as you continue to do these experiments and as you think about this theoretically, I would say that the kind of experiments that we're doing right now are introductory, but that we don't have a strong enough hypothesis that we're, we're actually testing with, with these experiments. I think, we, I think we can agree on that. I mean, the kind of the, the loose version of the hypothesis is all of these paths ultimately go to SK. They start in the right, they start with a Boolean expression, they end in the truth value. And but because you can apply these SK rules in arbitrary positions, there are cases where we don't see this regular correspondence with how you would like there'll be cases where you're not just literally computing the and and computing the or and computing the equals and you know right um, and to, but it still evaluates to the same position. And so then the question is, is it the case? I guess maybe you could phrase it as, is it the case that there's still compositionality, but there's compositionality for for other non-minimal combinator emulations of Boolean operators, for instance. I mean, the question is, um, I don't know. Is this a naive question, by the way? I mean, this is the kind of the, the key curiosity, which is this, this thing ultimately tends towards S of K. It's invariant. Um, and some of these paths are going to correspond to Boolean algebra. I guess the naive question is whether or not all of them correspond to Boolean algebra but the Boolean algebra is just not um, not minimal, or it takes more more effort to find. Um, My I, guess, I, actually, I mean, I, I can I can yeah, answer that yeah. I think more or less directly in the sense that so you always have evaluations again. That's this is why I started with evaluations. So and evaluations are already 
below level of Boolean algebra, right? So if you package those as a single evaluation, then it might be meaningful to ask that. I would say intuitively that the moment that you have something that is larger than, than the minimal expression for the evaluation, you have all the possible paths that compose. The full multi-way gives you all the compositions of paths as well, right? So, yes. so I think there's always going to be more. I mean, intuitively, generically, I think there's going to be much more. More, than more, more what? More, more paths than the ones that would cor more, more graph, right? Like more edges that, that would correspond to simply concatenations of, of evaluation subgraphs, right? But this is just an intuitive idea. I mean, this, this I think should be tested. I mean, this is something that, and because it's not only whether that's the case or not, but also to what degree this is the case, right? Is, I, is, it, is it that you have largely graphs that are mostly compositional and there's, there's like this clear way in which, oh, right, because S can always ingest this many elements and this happens. And then there's a, I mean, in a way the, the rules are very, I mean, they're infinitely deterministic. So, you know, in a sense, maybe there is like overarching patterns of, you know, these are the blocks and, and they, 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 they interact in a non-trivial way. So you get more than the sum of, of its parts, but, but it's not like crazily more or counterintuitively intuitively more. There's a, there's a certain pattern that happens. So it can be completely crazy. It can be largely just the, the addition of the, of the compositions of the elements, or it can be something in between that you know, is more complex. And I think that's a meaningful experimental drive to have. Okay. Nick, what's your, what's your instinct on this? All the paths ultimately lead to true or false. You begin with some emulation of a Boolean expression. Many of these paths themselves look quite wild. What do you think we're going to find ultimately? Are there going to be Boolean operators that we can ultimately compose in some way, but they're more difficult to find? Or is this, or is this just some, is it just, um, you know, it's just a general property of these combinators. Um, and it, it at some level it it exceeds boolean algebra even though you can find boolean algebra in it not all of it will ultimately have anything to do with boolean algebra no i think everything is going to be something to do with boolean algebra so every sub expression of every state in the multi-way evolution of the combinators of those expressions that been compiled as a boolean expression in the middle always going to behave like Boolean. Interesting. Well, but, but wouldn't Nick, that be cool? But Nick, isn't, isn't that already not the case with evaluations? Like Why? Evaluation of and uh, true and true, right? This has, I mean, what, what, is the, what is the meaning of the intermediate states of that? Well, if you just run all the sub-expressions, well, they also have a boolean function corresponding boolean function always right all the intermediate states always have a boolean correspondence really I think well so. we have we, we haven't established it i mean i think it's explicitly we not the case right i mean otherwise I'm we haven't confused. we haven't done we haven't well, done the well, you only compare it to the single table not to the no actual. i know no this is i mean this is what i was hoping we were going to discuss uh today really is is to do these other searches for these intermediate steps so we discussed some other theoretical matters which are also uh, as i said are also helpful but this is i really i think this is really the key thing is to uh we need to widen our search for these intermediate states and nick has a very provocative conjecture that they're all going to be boolean now nick they're all going to be boolean functions you can you conjecture um but under this k equals true s s of k equals false no even, uh, even stronger maybe even every sub expression of those gonna be like boolean so meaning if you just feed it some boolean arguments of some arity they're always gonna evaluate true and false well i'd love to find those but, i would love to find those Nick, you know uh, there's gonna there's gonna be some arity cap of course like yeah, maybe it's some <laughs> two hundred and fifty seven arity function. But I mean this is a great look, I don't know if I agree with Nick, but it's a it's a it's a it's a fun, controversial no, I, uh, I don't understand. Perhaps. I don't understand what Nick is trying to say. So is it 
Well, I, I think, uh, Nick, let, let me just try, not because I think I can explain it better, but I want to ensure, ensure that at least I understand what, what Nick is saying. Nick, if, you, if, what I understand, if I understand you correctly, you're saying we take some intermediate uh, step in one of these evaluations, we take either the whole thing or we take some sub-expression, and then we throw truth values at it, though according to different levels of arity, and it should be the case that at some arity, when given these different truth values, there should be some truth table for for this particular sub sub expression yeah. when treated as a as a as a boolean operator well that's that's quite a conjecture ah, i actually i mean okay okay right i, 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 that? I did not get that okay yes that's very different yeah, that's, that that's an interesting conjecture why do you think that's true just just out of curiosity i don't i, I don't have a position one way or the know. other well, I, I don't know i don't have a reason <laughs> just, just to guess <laughs> Okay, but well, I can I can I can suggest uh, another way of disproving it. It's like you can either just enumerate all of those and just see whether those are true. But I think I think a simple uh, way would be actually to disprove it. To disprove it is much simpler, basically, right? You have to find the expression inside of your evaluation that is not that doesn't have. Uh, well, but you said it... something else that's true and false, right? But... No more form is, is you have to find this you just enumerate a bunch of combinators that have not a true and false normal form and you just search for those if you find but, it you just prove this conjecture but it wasn't the idea that it will it will be a, a boolean operator for some arbitrary arity yeah so so that's that's I, I think it seems like it's difficult to disprove because it's like you could always say oh we got this garbage for you know, in, in this particular case, but it's actually a Boolean operator that's non minimal for arity 837. You know, so it, it, it feel like it, it, I'm not sure if it's, if it can be proven or disproven, but you can certainly examine it up to some boundary. Like we're going to try it up to a certain arity. Yeah, yeah that's how, yeah. But yeah, yeah. you can do it in general. Isn't, isn't the arity, isn't the arity limit somewhat, I mean, the, the arity is somewhat determined by the length of the of the expression isn't it yeah, that's a that's a good question because um, you given any combinator expression you can feed it any number of arguments so you're saying hold on Nick. so you're saying <laughs> we'll have some so we'll have some intermediate step uh and there'll be some sub expression and you could say it's a arity 17 combinator in this particular case it's an arity 17 combinator that happens to just be fed two arguments. And so it's not, it's not a self serve acting as a Boolean operator, but it is a Boolean operator. If you were to actually give it the number of arguments that it needs. Do you have any, any particular reason beyond? So do, do, do you have a, do you have a, a stronger, do you have a stronger feeling why this should be the case and not just any random, um, combinator expression? <laughs> Nick is like the oh, that, that may even work for random one. Yeah, I, I think that even stronger conjecture would be the, that any 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 combinate expression okay. is a boolean. Now, now I'm getting Nick. Now I'm get. Now I understand what you're where you're going. Because if you if you if you say that this you would push it all the way to random, then I'm I, I start to see why. Yeah, I would I would agree with that intuition actually. So I thought I thought you were seeing some some connection between the fact that it's a, it's an output of a, or an or intermediate state of a, of a boolean evaluation uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. has something to do. No, no, I agree. I agree. I agree. That's that's a possible thing. A plausible thing. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, ASCII combinators are universal, right? Because, I mean, at the end of the day, Boolean emulation is, I mean, it's, ex I mean, we, we are considering all these 16 operators and it's literally every possible binary operator on Boolean values, right? So, I mean, it's not, I mean, in some sense, how to put it? in some sense, we are not studying Boolean algebra, right? Um, so, in, in some sense, we're not really studying Boolean algebra um explicitly i think we we are a little bit more when we when we use a function that i defined i mean at some point you probably remember that i have this 
Boolean operators XFL. So Boolean oper operators cross first and last, right? Not first and last. So, so this is a bit more like Boolean algebra. I still think that's much larger than what Boolean algebra really should be in a, in a way, because I mean, Boolean alge algebra is not all the operators simultaneously, right? Boolean algebra is the minimal expression of Boolean algebra. In mathematically speaking, I'm just sp speaking in more traditional mathematical terms, right? So, so we are, I mean, these, these searches are very useful because we are learning how to probe this stuff and the probing is, is always going to be like this. So it's not, it's not like we're doing something else that we should be doing, but, but we're not really studying Boolean algebra as a mathematical, as the traditional mathematical theory of Boolean algebra. Even, even if, even within evaluations, we're studying this, um, all possible, all combinatorial possibilities of, of binary operators of two, of two elements. So it's not, it's not exactly, um, it's not exactly um, Boolean algebra, right? So that's why we shouldn't get, I mean, if we get very optimistic about this, it's like, all right, so we might get very trivial results. Again, it, it would also be interesting to find them, but, but it, would be, it might be very trivial that we just defined, this is right, right? This is all the possible functions on two variables. On two, oh, I'm sorry, all the, all the possible binary operators on a set of two elements, right? These are these are yes. these, these are all of them, sixteen of them. Um, yes. So this this emulation, but it's just a, this is just a, something that I needed in my in my in my mind to understand what I'm doing. Uh, this particular one, the sixteen one. This is not an emulation of Boolean algebra. This is an emulation of all the binary operations on a two element set. So we know that combinators are going to emulate anything because we know they're universal in this sense, but that's really what they are emulating. Now, claiming that we are emulating Boolean algebra, I think requires further uh, specifications and further argument. Um, what criteria, what additional criteria do you think we need to meet? My, in my opinion, what I would, what I would say is what I, what I said just before, which is, is try to emulate the axioms. Thing? So, so if we manage to emulate, if, if we manage to have a, um, a clear emulation of a semi of a semi ring, um, I mean, these two element semi ring, right, the Boolean semi ring, then then I will be much more confident of saying, yes, this is this is Boolean algebra, right? Now, when, when you say emulate the axioms, obviously, you could just take the axiom. Yeah, as as some expression, and you can run it and it'll it'll run to to true. But that's well, not no, that, that's, axiom, that's not that's not what you mean no no that's not what i mean because that we are we're in this kind of self-referential land that you know checking axioms in mathematics normally involves logic and now we are also trying to do the axioms of logic at the same time so so that's why i'm, I'm trying yeah, to sort yeah. of dissociate a little bit from that and saying so if you sure. just take boolean algebra as an axiomatic theory um yes then i would say that you need some kind of framework that allows you to say, you know, it's it's the diagram. I think the diagram. Okay, that the, actually the diagram um, that I drew was so the images down here. So actually, the, the, what is written on the on the right hand side is evaluation, right? Because it's one and zero and zero zero whatever. But what is written yeah. under Boolean algebra is what I really mean. I think what I think Boolean algebra should be, which is the the basic ax the symbolic axioms of Boolean algebra. And we yes. we are not really emulating those. Those are a, those are a consequence of our evaluation emulation, right? I agree. So I'm just I agree. just a comment that that's a good ring. It's a good. It's an additional challenge. It's yeah, it's another wrinkle. thing to, to yes. look out for. But for now, good. I think we, we have yes. a, we have a clear mind of what we're doing. I think we have for next for next meeting. I think we'll we'll have a good a good uh, improvement on, on what we have. I yeah. I would prioritize those those searches. Um, that seems like a, a really important next thing. I mean, there are, there are a few things to do. Yeah. Um, I would prioritize those searches. You mean, yeah. you mean the searches for, for the, the ones that Nick suggested? Yes. Where you're, where you're taking, you're taking the intermediate steps, you're taking the different positions yeah. and you're throwing arguments at them, true and false values. And you're trying, and you're computing their their truth table okay right. and you and you'll do and you'll, and you'll do it up to certain arity probably just starting with arity two three something like something like that right 
yeah. Sure. Okay. Well, good. I, I don't know when we began. We might have already. We've met the we've hour. we've gone up for about an hour now. Wow. No, exactly. Wow, this. Now. Wow, this hour is really. This this afternoon's really gone by uh, quickly. Well. Productive. We, we we probably could riff on this more, but I feel like we kind of understand what needs to be done next. Yep. This was a good, like, I felt as though we probably didn't have enough time on Friday to discuss everything that we needed to discuss, which is why I decided to just have an immediate follow-up. Now, um, you both have presented some really interesting ideas that are helpful. I think, I think in general, this project, this project began um, by a, um, a series of different kind of intuitions. And so, you know, as this project goes forward, obviously I had a first, I had a few kind of strong recommendations of how to begin, but making this a richer uh, project where with time the experiments come to address hardened, quite precise hypotheses or questions within an increasingly strong theoretical framework, that's obviously what we're, what we're aiming for. And so I'm really happy to see that in addition to just kind of doing these experiments, you're, you're actually trying to, you're actually thinking about this quite carefully. This is really exactly what I was hoping for. Great. So cool. All right, guys. Cool. Thanks a lot. Thanks for the viewers. And um, yeah, I'll, I'll add some, I'll add some meetings to the calendar after I have like a few other non live stream meetings to attend to. But when, when I, when I get the chance, I'll, I'll add some, um, Use yeah. the counter for, for tomorrow. I just, I I think just it's commented. Be... I just commented on one of the chats. I mean, the viewers don't really care about this, but remember about Thursday that I'm flying and I propose to to swap to have my meeting on Friday so I can be there for for the meeting. Yes. But yeah. 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 Easy fix. Yeah. Cool. All right. All right. Thanks, guys. Cheers. Goodbye. See ya. Thank you.